Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. And here is today's news in electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee and this is your EV News Daily for Friday the 9th of March 2018. Now, before I kick off the show today, a word about the Tesla semi-trucks that are on the road right now. The two prototypes that we saw at the launch, at the unveiling, are now ferrying batteries between the Gigafactory and Fremont for production. Lots of pictures are making their way online. There's little gallery on Inside EVs. You can search on Twitter and you'll find them if you are interested. A recent tweet by Elon Musk regarding Tesla maps and navigation suggests the product is nearly ready to roll out. And by that, of course, I mean the over-the-air updates that Tesla owners get. Well, this is not to be confused with a different but similar story recently regarding a beta test of the new autopilot. Well, according to occasional reports from Tesla owners, the current maps and nav uh, can plan some odd or overly concept routes. And it was all the way back in summer of last year that reports surfaced of Tesla creating their own maps using some open source code from Mapbox and Valhalla. Well, Tesla Maps was the first reported to uh, Electric.co by their reader, Very Green, and he'd hacked it. I say he, presume it's a he, could be a she. They hacked it in his own car. Well, late in 2017, the same hacker took Tesla's 2017.44 software update and I identified vector maps within it. The benefits of those vector maps seems to be a lot more detail, a further zoom in, and a much smoother user interface. Well, going back to Elon's tweets, what he previously described as light years ahead, he now says is almost done. And once again, we're learning more about the work that Tesla is doing in the tweets that Elon sends out in response to questions from Tesla owners. Well, moving on, and General Motors CEO Mary Barra has announced her company will expand production of the Chevy Bolt. She was speaking recently at an energy conference by IHS Market in Houston. There have been several stories in the news recently regarding comments made by oil execs regarding electric cars, and they all seem to be coming out of that one conference. Earlier this week, Saudi Aramco CEO Amin Nazar told CNBC it would take generations for a transformation towards electric vehicles. So how much is a generation? Is it 15 years? Is it 20 years? So multiples of that, say it's generations is two, that would be EVs are 40 years away. Well, maybe I'm putting numbers into his mouth, but you decide what that means. Well, however, then there's Mary Barrett, who took the opportunity to disagree in a CNBC interview. She says, I think it's going to happen more quickly than decades, as more and more people recognise that we have the right range, understand that we have a charging infrastructure, so they don't have to be stranded, and I think you're going to see EV adoption continue, she said. And that leads us on to her comments about increased Chevy Bolt production later this year at its Orion assembly plant near Detroit to meet growing demand around the world for the all-electric model. Now, she didn't give a percentage increase, but she did say the ramp-up would create new jobs at the plant. So it sounds like it's more than a bit of overtime being offered to current employees. They're actually adding shifts. That's quite significant. She also said, we see a role in investing in partnering and making sure that the customer need is fulfilled. And I think that uh, that move signals some sort of partnership on the cards or that she wants to do in terms of their own charging infrastructure, maybe. All right, next. Meanwhile, perhaps the best people to ask about electric cars are not the folk who profit from selling fossil fuels. But let's look back at some of the comments made at the same energy conference that I was able to Google today. Well, the BP... British Petroleum CEO Bob Dudley sees tremendous opportunities around the corner, uh, but they're not the silver bullet that everyone is looking for. Total, the French company Total, uh, their CEO Patrick Poyan already has an electric car. He loves how quiet it is, uh, but says uh, you have to rent the battery. I'm spending more to rent my battery than to pay for the gasoline I was putting in my small car. I'm convinced says to Total CEO, I'm convinced that in a big city we'll have plenty of electric cars in 10 to 15 years. When it comes to oil demand, though, let's be clear that what's important is the kilometres driven and the small car in the city does not drive many kilometres per year. Well, Mike Lorenz is the executive vice president of gasoline retail company Sheets Inc. I wonder what he had to say <laughs> about electric cars. Was it complimentary? Uh, no, he doesn't see them on the uh, around the corner or autonomous vehicles. He says it's one of those things that sounds cool, but I can't see happening anytime soon. 
Right. And they all have a point, actually. If you take it from the perspective that only 20% of global oil consumption is for car travel, particularly to go to refineries for petrol and gasoline, that's a fifth of all oil. You know, even if every single car on the planet was an EV. Right. And that <laughs> that magic wand isn't going to be waved anytime soon. But even if it was, it's a fifth of their business. I mean, maybe it's a profitable part of their business. I don't know how the numbers shake out. They, they don't want to see any part of their business eroded. They'd rather we were all driving big gas guzzlers, wouldn't they? Anyway, you can file that under the least surprising thing you'll hear today. Oil execs don't like electric cars. Somebody else who likes hybrids, but not full electrics just yet. A McLaren automotive based here in Woking in the UK. No electric car added to their range before 2022. They say they're not exciting enough to drive yet. What? <laughs> they they really said that. They are not exciting enough to drive yet. The thing is, though, they, they make hypercars that... 0.001% of the population A can afford and B can drive properly. So, I guess a car on its utter limits. Well, yeah, maybe you need to burn some fossil fuels uh, to get that 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 final little bit of performance out. Anyway, McLaren boss Mike Fluitt confirmed to Autocar magazine in the UK that an EV isn't even on the medium term plans with McLaren. He says, "With EVs developing is the right word and we have an electric mule running around it's more important for the attributes than the powertrain itself how exciting can an ev be next to the senna it isn't and uh, that's where he finishes uh the senna by the way is the new crazy ridiculous hypercar from mclaren uh that is it's like a formula one car you can drive on the road so uh that's what they're comparing it to <laughs> he continues it's some way off, and it's not in the plan because we don't have the answer at the moment. Well, that's okay, McLaren. You carry on doing what you're doing. You make amazing cars. Uh, and uh, there's plenty of other people who don't have the answer, but they're going to go and find out themselves. Maybe they are. Maybe that was a smokescreen they're sending up. Uh, he also said that to match the performance of an ICE supercar, it would have to have enough batteries to weigh two tonnes. Now, he's obviously the expert in this. I am not smart enough to be leading uh, the road car division of the world's second most successful Formula One team <laughs> behind Ferrari, so who am I to disagree with him? But I would say, respectfully, that the RIMAC, uh, the second RIMAC announced at Geneva this week, ticked a lot of the boxes that he says can't be ticked yet. Even the Rimac 1 is a beast. We'll see one one day. Ah, uh, mark my words. Well, the latest crop of electric supercars from the I-Pace to the Audi e-tron talk about the 150 kilowatts charging speeds. And of course, Porsche are committed to an 800 volt, 350 kilowatt charging speed for their Mission E. And you may also know that there are now five ultra-fast charging networks coming to Europe, either here or planned, uh, so that we are future-proofed here in Europe for EV charging. And now, a Danish company called Nerve Smart Systems uh, claims those charging stations stations can handle full charge rates with multiple vehicles at once. Their solution, their product, if you like, is called Nerve Switch. It's a battery buffer, a bit like Tesla do at some of those Tesla supercharging stations. It's a battery buffer, uh, and what that means is that you don't require a hefty grid connection. Now, that saves a lot of time, but it saves a load of money not putting that big grid infrastructure into places. Think of all those places where you'd love to stop for 20 minutes to top up to 80% charge, right? 20 miles per one minute of charge ish right so you can plug in for 20 minutes and get a good range you can plug in for half an hour and, and fill your battery up uh, those might be places that you want to stop for 20 minutes you want to dive into a uh, Starbucks uh, you might want to pop into what was used to be a filling station uh, you want to do a little bit of shopping and not necessarily stop somewhere for two three hours uh, but you want to just pop somewhere and that's the kind of place that isn't gonna have millions of pounds or dollars or euros to redo their grid infrastructure. This is why it's so important uh, that if you can actually have some battery backup on site to handle the peaks of when three or four cars turn up to all charge at full rates, that's what makes it sensible. The CEO, a chap called Jesper, explained this. Most people talk about the range of electric vehicles, but in fact, he thinks it's the charging time that should worry future car owners when choosing between an electric and a conventional car. Towards 2020, the charger market, he continues, is expected to grow by 30% annually. By 2030, he says, 30% of the European car fleet will be pure EVs. It provides a great perspective for our solution because it both ensures fast charging for car owners and solves the capacity problem for the power grid, which occur when more and more people are charging. 
And once again, it's the pace of change which is enabling these kind of solutions. And that's the key. It's the bit I remind people of all the time. And I'm no expert in this. You join the dots. The curve of improvement, of adoption, all those kind of things, can't be calculated on the technology which exists today. EVs and their infrastructure are way more Silicon Valley than Detroit or Munich. So as new solutions are developed, the costs shrink dramatically. Think of Moore's Law and processing. Whilst the same law there isn't an equivalent for batteries or EVs, there is something similar at play. The rule book today gets torn up tomorrow because so much of it is electronics based so much of it is software based as well and you can't unlearn those software learnings and that's why things are getting better and cheaper all the time right finally a quick mention for one of the podcast listeners we have in france now i haven't asked him i should have asked him on twitter by the way uh, if i could say his name and i have forgot to so respectfully i won't say your name but you know who you are uh, in case People like their privacy, of course. It's regarding wait times for the brand new Nissan Leaf in France. Uh, now, this gentleman, uh, we were talking earlier on on um, DM on Twitter uh, to say that his dealer had called him today and his Leaf 2.0 launch edition, which had been planned for mid-February, which was then put back to next week, the 15th of March, was then rearranged today for the 9th of April. And to add insult to injury, there is a €4,000 scheme currently uh, happening in France to trade in your old diesel. That scheme expires at the end of this month. He says there's around 750 people in the same situation, losing, standing to lose thousands of pounds in uh, incentives, uh, thousands of euros, I should say, because they can't sign on the dotted line take delivery of their leaf before the end of the month that sucks i'm so sorry and disappointed for you now i did check in with the latest from nissan and uh, after you sent me this message and they issued a statement today coincidentally by the way not to us uh, that they were selling a new leaf every 12 minutes and that demand is exceptionally strong in europe orders are now up to 19,000, of which 13,000 of them were pre-orders now of course in europe they're being made in sunderland the same location where the batteries are being made before uh, Nissan sold off their interest in that operation. Uh, I have no more knowledge, by the way, of supply chains than probably you do. But I'm sure if they could get you a car sooner, they absolutely would. And what I think sucks is you being let down. Um, if you knew it was going to be April all along, you could have planned for that. But twice being pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, it's not fair to you. Well, please feel free to comment on the podcast blog. We upload all these episodes to a web page, a WordPress blog, at evnewsdaily.com. And if you have any comments, you can add to any of these stories or your own experience of leaf uh, wait times. My email address, if you have any further insight, is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Uh, thank you for listening today. Hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to spread the word about electric cars, so share this if you can. You can listen to every previous episode of this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and and the blog, like I say, evnewsdaily.com. Please do subscribe. It's free. You get them every day. You can leave a little review if you get time. No worries. If not, uh, say hi on Twitter. We are at evnewsdaily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.